What's up guys? This is Serge Ibaka, aka Mafuzi Chef, and welcome to a special edition of Angra You in Bahamas. It's an all-star break and we're here with the NBPA. And today I have a very, very, very special guest, Mr. Jose Andres. How are you, Serge? I'm good. How are you? So happy to be here with you. No, thank you for coming. Since you are here in my show, I have some gift for you. Alright. I got something special for you here. I got a hat of my Fuzzy Chef. Hat. Uh oh. I love the logo. And, uh, okay. and this is for you here to wear too. Oh my god. Yeah, I have to put an apron? Yeah, you have to. Search Ibaka? Are you kidding me? Sure I put that apron. Here you go. So what are we doing today? We're gonna cook my favorite thing yeah. right now in the whole world. And it's actually a delicacy in the Bahamas. I love the con because it's this sea snail. Unbelievable, when you see the fishermen that they go and they catch them, and then they are able to take the body out. That's it, that's all you have in? Well, some are small, some are bigger. What is so special about this you like so much? Number one, this is almost like the heart of the Caribbean, right? Since I was very little, I always saw these very big shells. And I remember almost like when people will bring this to the ear. Okay. And almost feeling like you are listening the sound of the ocean. Oh, wow. Anyway, while yeah. you ask me questions, yeah. you're going to be squeezing some of the orange juice here okay. and some of the limes. Okay. We want it very fresh. All right, fresh. So, why are you here in Bahamas? And for me now, Bahamas is almost like I have a restaurant, I'm able to learn a new culture, I'm, I, I'm able to bring what I know, but also I'm learning so much from the people. Okay. And that's what I love about opening restaurants in other parts, because I bring a little bit of me, but I, I learn so much from the people. And I opened this restaurant two years ago, and quite frankly, I fell in love with the people of Bahamas, but in total I have like 30, 32 restaurants. How many of my restaurants you've eaten? In New York? The one in New York? The one in New York, yes. Right. You're and safe, today, man. Yeah. You're safe. So I know you are a fan of the basketball, like the NBA. How did you fall in love with the game? Where I grew up, basketball was everything. The basketball court was in the middle of my little town. And we were all day in the basketball court. So I played a team, Ta Coloma de Cervello, outside Barcelona. Okay. Pau Gasol and I, we will play in the same basketball court. And that's why he's so good, because... So the reason Pau is so good, because... I, I, I gave him some magic. Okay. I, very important. Then I became a coach, too, of young... You was a coach, yeah. too? I became a coach. And for me, it was some of the most rewarding experience in my life. Sports, basketball, to me, gave me a sense of teamwork. Of when we play, when we train, and beyond playing. Uh, gave me some of the best moments of my life. You played the game last night, right? You played the game, the celebrity game. I played the celebrity game. How did it go? Amazing. And I heard like you, you had to practice the day before with Jose Calderon. I had Jose Calderon oh, as my trainer. And then on the game, I didn't miss a shot. I got one rebound. And I don't know what happened, but they didn't give me more minutes, man. So you need more minutes? I so need coach, more minutes. Coach, come on, coach. Next game, celebrity game, we want to make sure you play a minimum 15 minutes. You know Grant from the Chicago Bulls? Yeah. That I was about to go in and the coach tell me, Sorry, Jose, you cannot go in because Grant is going. Now I can tell everybody that they exchanged me for Grant in an NBA game. Yeah. I made it, man. You made it, huh? I made it. Yeah, Drew Was through. Grant on me? And the coach, he, has, he had to think for a second or two. So it was between Grant and Jose Andres. He like... That's a tough decision for a coach. Amazing. That's a tough decision. What well, about well, football? Did you, did you play football when you were young? Or? You know when you are from a little town yeah. and you are only so many boys that you have to play in the basketball team, in the soccer team, in whatever team, yeah. because they need people. I was so bad that they would put me forward, the number nine, but not because I was a good scorer. It was only to make sure I didn't bother anybody in the back field. So what's your favorite team, soccer favorite team in Europe? Come on, man, look at me. <laughs> oh, you tell me, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> hey, look at me, man. You, What's your favorite team in soccer? In come on, Europe? man, look at me. What, what team am I mean, no, like, maybe you have, to tell, you have to tell them. I mean, Barcelona. Barcelona. I mean, come on, look okay. at me. I cannot be of any other team. What, what team are you? Huh? What team no, are no, you? No, no, I'm the one asking a question. No, 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 no,
You know this is gonna be the most expensive lime and orange juice in the history of mankind? This one? Why? Yeah, because it is. I mean, I had you for the last two hours and, and he made this. I don't cook like you, you know no, that, I right? see, you are only talking and asking questions. <laughs> it's obviously. You cook because you're a master chef, but me, I don't cook, I design. Okay, so you're gonna design right now? No, no, why not? It's, it's yours because I wanna see what you, what you do because I wanna learn to cook. I think we're gonna do a stand at the Raptors that we're gonna say, search Ibaka orange juice. The most expensive orange juice in the history of mankind by yes. search Ibaka yeah. in here. We put some salt. Yes. Like it, very important from above. So the salt is evenly distributed everywhere. Okay. Let's see the style. That's it. What, what was that? I know you're a master, but you may learn this from no, me. No, no, I'm learning. I, Look. I, I'm impressed. I mean, let me... <laughs> I apologize because I laugh, but actually I laugh of happiness. So you took the war kitchen this morning. Tell us. So listen, sir. Because I was there and it's like, it, it looks small, but it's really impressive about all the things you told me about the, the kitchen. Yeah, listen Serge, for me it's very simple. I got so much from people all my life. So everybody gave me, gave me, right? We all get. And sometimes you feel like you have to give back. Yeah. And for me it was very important when in Washington DC, 25 years ago, I began cooking in a soup kitchen called DC Central Kitchen. We will feed homeless, but then we will take these same homeless out of the streets. We will train them to be cooks and then we will find them jobs in the community. Brilliant! Wow. Making sure that we didn't waste food, but more important, making sure that we didn't waste people. Very powerful. Not doing it because I feel good, but doing it because it's smart and we are helping somebody. People don't want our pity. People want our respect. So World Central Kitchen happens after Haiti. The earthquake hit for Prince, thousands of people dead. I went there, one more person, and I began cooking, feeding people that were without homes. And that's how World Central Kitchen began. It's very simple. We don't plan, we don't meet. We began cooking and we start feeding. And we're a big group of cooks and many other people that we come together in emergencies all around the, the world. We try to do what we do best, which is bringing hope one plate of food at a time. So Kevin Joan and the MBPA made the donation. How can people help? I can tell you, help my organization, World Central Kitchen, but sometimes it's so many organizations in your hometown. A little NGO that they are doing something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes one dollar goes a long way. And sometimes, you know, when Bahamas happen, a lot of people cancel their vacation. No good. When Bahamas happen is when actually people were supposed to show up for vacation. Why? Because that's how you're helping the people of a place. Sometimes it doesn't require something out of the extraordinary. Sometimes you show up and you, you give respect to the people. And that's the best way sometimes to help anybody to move forward. Sometimes it's all we need. So talk, talk a little bit about your relationship with other players. I will meet them because they will come to my restaurant or I will meet them because I will go to, to watch them play basketball. And especially when you see who they are outside the basketball court. When I go with John Wall to a soup kitchen in Washington and he volunteers, he may be a great player, but what makes me really be in love with him yeah. is like he commits work beyond even what the team tells him he has to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so cool. Today, you're busy to our soup kitchen. You know how much happiness you brought to all those people? Uh, you don't have to be doing this, you're here in a, enjoying your weekend off from the NBA, but here you are doing it, and for that I thank you. So who you have coming? No, a surge could be anything. I, know. I mean, we've seen snakes, we've seen crickets. Gauss cart, I think. I, I yeah, know. animal parts. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be hungry with this. That's the thing, I, I'm, uh, I'm not really trying to explore too much. Do you guys like to try new things or not really? I kind of know what I like. You know, uh, before we eat, 
I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions and then uh, we go here. What do players love about Toronto? Play in Toronto. So many different ethnicities, you know, you have so much culture. You know, if you uh, spark, especially food, you know, you can get authentic food, you know, from wherever you go. You know, the fans, you know, after we won, it was a lot of support. Like, people say cities behind you, you got a whole country behind you, so, you know, you really feel that, like, that family support system behind you in Toronto. It's a little bit different for me, because I played there for eight years. Even when we were, weren't that good, I think the fans were always there for us. Like you say, that feeling of being a country team, I think you have that since day one. Did you play against Kobe, right? I'm sure you, did you play against Kobe? No. I'm sure you played against Kobe. So. Uh, that day that he scored 81. Yeah, I, was, yeah, 81. I, I was there. I was there. Was there. What, how, how, how did you leave? Well, it, you was, know, like, it was great. Someone was scoring 81 points in the yes. game. Like. And everybody was telling me, like, oh, you were there that day. I'm like, no, it's great. It was history. I told this story a lot. It's, we were winning. So then, you know, Kobe scoring. He's doing his thing. He scored. Uh, but we, we were okay, the coach was okay, okay, keep him going, yeah. don't, don't let the other guys, you know, score until uh, the thing start changing. So now he start pulling from everywhere. It doesn't matter if he was open or not, he was a double team, he was scoring on us all the time. But after he was a great guy of the court, like a friend, uh, you could talk to him, he respect you. You play hard, he will, he will respect you. And that, that's the whole, you know, thing and the feeling that they, they stay with us forever, it's gonna stay forever. Kobe will come to my restaurant, but I was the playoffs. I will go sometimes following the Lakers. We were in Boston. At the end of the game in the hotel, I was alone in the bar. Kobe was still there with friends, family, and he called me. Say, hey, Jose, I want you to know I'm very, very happy you are coming with us to see the game. Sit down here with, with us and thank you for the support. I'm telling you that story only for, he cared for the little details in, in very special ways. Trying to make sure a guy like me will not be alone in Boston, in the bar. And he used make sure that he would take the time to say thank you for coming. Telling thank you to me was telling thank you to all the fans. That was what made him so special. Oh, why? How hungry are you guys? I'm, I'm hungry by now, but I'm... Okay. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> because because see. today, me and Chef, we cook for you guys. Conch. This is conch. You see, it's too food. Corn cocktail salad. Too food, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that's like a snail. It's, yeah, but it's seasonal. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, the orange juice here is the most expensive orange juice in the history because he took two hours to squeeze <laughs> two oranges yes. and one lemon. Got sushi here. How are you, chef? I'm good. Oh, wow. Fire engine. Oh, Fire engine is really good. Fire engine. Fire engine, good. Now this is my thing now. <laughs> so it seemed like you guys were enjoying the food. I just want to thank you guys for coming. This was a special edition of Angra You in Bahamas with my Fuzzy Chef. I'll see you next time. Somebody asked me about this experience, I always feel blessed. Like I always say, and I, I, will, I will keep saying. And those kind of things is where I feel like I made it. You know, Be, being in these positions where I can help kids, can come here, make smile in their face. This is no price. You don't have price for that, man. You cannot buy this. This is no price. This is God's gift.
Sometimes they tell us, be afraid of those that they are not like you. And actually I'm learning that that's the wrong approach. Everybody has the same commitment to their family, their community. And immigrants like us, we play that role of sending a message of saying, hey, we are like you. We may look different, we may speak different, but we are the same.